No, there must be something wrong. Do I have a broken MacBook Pro? Okay. Oh. Just came in the door. The new MacBook Pros. And no doubt, you know, like myself, you've already seen all of the big names of YouTube immediately order the most maxed out, specced out MacBook Pros possible. Like the, the very, very top end. And they promptly gave those laptops a healthy, healthy diet of 8K red raw footage from $50,000 camera systems. And while that's been super fun to watch, I'm willing to, wow, this is really nice. I'm willing to bet that that kind of usage case and frankly, that kind of budget doesn't represent most creators' situations or workflows. I know it doesn't for me anyways. And that is exactly why we are making this video. This is the base model 16 inch MacBook Pro. And this is the test of us for the rest of us. Nope, that didn't work. Never mind that. While it seems like the rest of the internet is wanting to see, you know, how much money they could spend on one of these things, I want to find out how little we have to spend on one of these in order to do a really, really amazing job on a day-to-day -day basis for years to come. I'm really hoping this one works out. Oh, whoa, I just, I just opened the lid and now it's turning on. I did not hit the, a power button. Where is the power? It must be the fingerprint reader, right? It must be. <laughs> I wasn't planning on turning this on yet. I'm gonna be testing it against two very common computers for creatives out there. One is my iMac Pro, base model iMac Pro, and the other one is my 2015 MacBook Pro. We're gonna see just how well this thing handles certain files. And yeah, we may not be pushing 8K RED RAW footage for this thing, but there are some prosumer grade cameras and codecs out there that really push computers to their limits. You know, GoPro's 5.3K footage, like 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second and their 4K 120 come to mind. I mean, really, like even this iPhone 13 Pro, this thing's shooting like 400 megabit per second Apple ProRes files now. So I'm really curious to see how this machine's gonna handle it. Okay, so the SD card transfer, that's gonna be the first one. Basically, I kind of want to mimic like a, a typical workflow for somebody who's got some photo work to do, some video work to do. And so first, you've got to get that stuff out of your camera and on your computer. And hey, look, there's an SD card slot, so let's use it. This is about, uh, I think it was about an eight gig file. It's not a massive file, but you know, it was a whole bunch of photos. It was about 201 photos. And for the iMac, it was 38 seconds for the transfer. And on the brand new MacBook Pro M1 Pro, um, that was 35 seconds, so basically the same thing. And then the old MacBook Pro, that was a minute and 38 seconds, so substantially longer there. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense because this is a UHS-2 memory card. It's a very, very fast memory card from Sony. It's from their Tough series. Um, so super fast read and write speeds. And this new laptop has that UHS-2 reader and so does the iMac Pro, but the old one doesn't. So no, no huge surprises there. Now onto the Capture One Pro import. We have the import from the iMac at two minutes and 16 seconds. That's for 201 photos. These are raw photos taken with a Canon M6 Mark II. Then for the MacBook Pro, the new one, that was a minute 51. And so faster, but not by a huge margin actually. And then uh, the old MacBook Pro was two minutes and 41 seconds. Not really all that far off the time of the iMac Pro. So pretty, pretty good job on that old uh, laptop actually. And then this is where we see one massive and kind of strange difference. So like the import, I was actually expecting a little bit more out of this brand new MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. I didn't really see it for the import. You know, it was the fastest, but uh, I, I, I don't know, I thought it'd be really crazy fast. Anyways, on the export, uh, I also was hoping for big things with the new laptop, but it actually didn't really do that well in comparison to the iMac Pro. And there was a big surprise on the old MacBook Pro too. And so for the iMac, we, well, for all of them, we exported 200, all those 201 photos. They started off as raw files and we kicked them out as JPEGs. And so on the iMac, it was two minutes and 58 seconds. Uh, on the new MacBook Pro was three minutes and 48 seconds, 50 seconds longer, which is really interesting. So clearly, you know, when you're exporting photos, the, uh, the iMac Pro is able to do a little bit more heavy lifting there. But when I went to go and do the export with the old MacBook Pro, now keep in mind that the other numbers, they weren't that far off, but on the export for the MacBook Pro, when I first hit the export button, I was like, whoa, 28 seconds, that's so good. 
until I realized that it was actually 28 minutes was the estimated time. And I let it run for quite a while and it seemed like it was actually going to take that full 28 minutes. So I just, I just stopped the export. It is so much worse than the other two. It's, it's surprisingly worse. Like if it, if it was much slower on the other two things that we had, had tested already, sure, like it wouldn't be such a huge surprise, but it was just an absolute travesty and the fan was flying, it was getting really hot and the battery was draining. So I just put it out of its misery after a few minutes. But now, we uh, this is kind of the moment that I've been waiting for and I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for this too. Um, we're gonna get into DaVinci Resolve and um, see how it does with some pretty heavy codecs, some higher frame rates, and some pretty big resolutions. And I can tell you right now, there were some pretty huge surprises here. All right, let's quickly run through the iMac Pro. So in the media tab of DaVinci Resolve, the 4K 24 frames per second plays without issue. And same with the 5.3K 30 frames per second. Although I did notice that when I was doing some basic color corrections, it was pretty laggy. Now the 4K 120 absolutely wrecks this machine. I personally cannot stand using optimized media, but when editing 4K 120 footage or any 120 frames per second footage, really, I have to spend the time converting it, which is something I really don't want to have to do on the new MacBook Pro. So I'm quite curious how it will play through. Yet for whatever reason, the 5.3K 60 frames per second played back just fine. The 4K 24 frames per second ProRes footage from my iPhone 13 Pro plays totally smoothly even when I stack them up, as did the stacked 4K footage from my Canon. And now the render time for this roughly 14 minute video. Man, the render really, really slows down once it gets to that 4K 120. About 20 minutes for that 14 minute export. Wow, that was, that was not great. And for the old MacBook Pro, we all know how this is gonna go. It basically struggled for anything 4K at any frame rate, and so certainly the 5.3K is not gonna do well either. And on the render, it took absolutely forever. It took so long that I eventually had to stop it because it would have been over an hour to actually just finish the render. So uh, yeah, kind of a difference there. All right, now the moment that I've been waiting for, and by the way, all, most of the voiceover that you've been hearing has been through the mic of the MacBook Pro. And I'm making it sound a little bit better by adding a little foam right there. And then, uh, well, going like this. Okay, time for the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is the moment that I've been waiting for. We did some tests and we actually found a pretty serious bug too. Okay. It's also Sounds in nice. Natural color. The Running smoothly, made. but this is, this is 4K 20, four frames per second. So if this didn't run smoothly, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> Got 5.3K at 30 frames per second. This is a wide lens setting. We are not on boost. What the heck? Yep, no drop frames. Looks good. Let's anyway, get into some major motion. Uh, which way? I never know which way to go. Smooth. I think this way. 5.3K at 60 frames per second. Oh yeah, no problem. And then we've got 4K 60. And this is the one that for whatever reason, the iMac really hated. Let's see how that goes. Totally Hopefully smooth. Good. good sign. <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff that I'm really interested in seeing because when you buy a computer, it's, yeah, it's about what you're working on now, but it's also maybe even more so about what you're gonna be working on a year or two down the road when you know, file sizes are bigger and the frame rates are up and the resolution is up. Like you really have to think of a couple years down the road. And so far, you know, this is looking really nice. But let's try 4K 120. This is gonna be a tough one, I think. Pushing the camera to the max. Um, the battery all of a sudden said 3%. And then it said two and then one and it died within like 30 seconds. Maybe Zero drop frames. So I put Zero drop frames. It's staying at 120 the whole time. Totally smooth, that's amazing. That's real. This is a base model computer. This is a base model laptop. <laughs> That's really incredible. I'm a little bit taken aback. Done. Playback is smooth. This is uh, ProRes 422 from an iPhone 13 Pro. This is somewhere around 400 megabits per second. So it is a beefy, beefy file. On a side note, I mean, look at the color. This is the this is the biggest thing, and this is gonna be my iPhone 13 Pro review. But if you look at the color on this, this is the biggest problem with the Apple phone app. I can't choose my freaking white balance. And so you see, there's like this yellow table, kind of gold table, and it just, 
decides to pull all that saturation out and makes the whole thing too blue. But if you go and look here, this was in, uh, what is it, Filmic Pro, where I chose the white balance. And look, it looks the way it's supposed to look. So that's nice. So this is a 4K timeline, by the way. This is some footage that I took for the GoPro Hero 10 Black review. It was such a pain in the butt to have to optimize the media for all of the 120 clips, and it took forever. It was such a pain. But now, you just work on it natively. It's incredible. Oh yeah, isn't that beautiful? Let's see. Yep. I'm impressed. I am very, 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 very impressed. This is what I wanted to see. This is what I needed to see in order to spend this kind of money. Perfect, okay. Let's see how it does on the render. Okay, that's interesting. Why is it so slow? That's really interesting. I didn't like do some weird setting on this, did I? Nope. No, there must be something wrong. It's rendering at one frame per second. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing else running other than the screen recording, which should not be, should not be affecting it that much. Nope, something's wrong. One frame a second again, it just stopped right there. Do I have a broken MacBook Pro? And do it. Do the thing. Nope. <laughs> it's not doing it. I, I'm gonna stop the screen recording. Render it. And now it's perfectly fine, at least so far. Okay. <laughs> that's good, yeah, I guess it, I mean, I did a whole bunch of updating on things. Whoa, that's really fast. Holy moly. Whoa, that's 90, 91 frames a second that it's rendering at. Record, let's see if this slows it down at all. Doesn't look like it. Okay, into the 4K 120. Oh. Maybe it is a screen recording. Something's messing with the... Let's stop it. See what happens. Yeah. Okay. Something with the screen recording. I don't know if it's something's clashing or whatever, but as soon as I turn that off... Whoa. We are at 90 frames a second on the 4K 120. That's nuts. Very strange about the screen recording thing, but I don't screen record all day when I'm, <laughs> when I'm just working, so that just might be worth it for me right there. <laughs> Four minutes, 53 seconds. So it would have been faster if I didn't try and start the screen capture stuff. I'm also paying almost $3,000 less for this than I paid for that iMac too. Think about that. <laughs> if you don't need the, the bigger HDR screen, the, the bigger monitor that this one has, if I was just doing photo work, I don't think I'd be upgrading yet because frankly, I mean, other than the, the export time, which was a little long, um, as far as working with the photos, it did a really good job, that older MacBook Pro. So there's that. But um, as far as like just editing videos for, my, for the two YouTube channels that, that I run, and especially because I am out on the road a lot, the new MacBook Pro is kind of a no-brainer. I mean like, I, I charged it 100% at the beginning of all of this and I haven't plugged it in since. And with all of those data transfers and all of the rendering and working on photos and exporting, it is now, oh, and also like listening to music and hearing the incredible speakers, by the way, and watching some HDR content on YouTube, it's, uh, it's down to 82%. So this thing has been running most of today and running pretty hard. And yeah, it's barely lost any battery life. Let me know if there's any other types of testing that I should do with this, anything that you'd wanna see. I am gonna do a full top to bottom review of this computer going down the road if I don't return it. Um, the only reason why I would ever consider returning this thing is to just bump it up with a little bit more uh, hard drive space. When it comes to SSDs, you generally don't want to run them more than half full. And so uh, I'd love to maybe get a one terabyte or a two terabyte into this. But otherwise, yeah, I, I, I really don't think we really need that M1 Max chip, at least for the kind of work that I do and maybe you do. So that is the uh, Apple MacBook Pro M1 Pro 16 inch first look. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that... Hey, look at that notch. What?